everyone, I'm Miranda and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I thought I'd have a cosy chat with you about my most recent reads. I've been reading such good books, I read a lot of really good ones at the end of August and then from the start of September I've read some more excellent ones so I've been really looking forward to sharing these books with you. I've got a bit of a range, I've got some golden age crime stories, I've got a wonderful memoir, I've got a cosy romance, I've got a sort of heartbreaking tragedy and a few others that I want to share. So let's get started, I'm going to choose some of the most seasonal and autumnal books that I've been reading to share with you first. So one that I've really been wanting to read is this one, The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. And I was so pleased to pick this up and I read it really quickly. It's a very easy, light read and it's a lovely, cosy romance. It's all about a young woman who is in fact a witch and there's a sort of rule amongst witches that they can never mix too long together, it's dangerous for them to all come to one place. So though she does know some other witches, she can only meet them about once every three months. But she's really yearning for a bit more human connection in her life amongst people who know who she is and who can understand her. Then one day, out of the blue, someone contacts her and asks her if she will tutor three young witches. So she goes off to this rambling old house in Norfolk and there she finds three young girls who are witches and who she needs to teach. But there's a lot of mystery as to why these girls are in this house, who's taking care of them and there are some secrets being hidden from her, especially by the very attractive but somewhat grumpy man who is in charge of the girls and also the library of the house. Yes, there is a sort of dusty old library, <laughs> very romantic in this book. And of course, um, they form an instant attraction, but there's a lot of sort of back and forth between them before the happy ending. But if you're in the mood for a bit of a cosy romance, then this is definitely a light and fun read. If you've seen the film Practical Magic, then I think some of the setting might resonate with you a bit. The house described in this story, although it's set in Norfolk and not America, reminded me a lot of the house in Practical Magic. There's, it just sounds so charming with this lovely kitchen and this beautiful attic bedroom and this big library. And then the heroine of the story, her sort of big goal in life is to be able to run a little shop where she sells her magical teas. And that just reminded me a lot of the shop in Practical Magic too. So if you're in that kind of mood, um, then I would definitely recommend picking this up. It would be a good one actually to start sort of late October around Halloween. because the story begins in October, then it goes into November and there's some Christmassy and winter solstice scenes in this which are just really cozy and lovely so I would recommend maybe starting this one around Halloween if you want to be really seasonal with your reading that would be a great choice for then. And then I got sent this book by the publisher so this is Death on the Downbeat an orchestral fantasy of detection by Sebastian Farr and it's one of the British Library crime classics and I just picked it up the same evening that it was sent to me and I pretty much read it in one sitting. It's a very slim read but really fun and it's a bit different from the normal golden age detective story type book because it's told mainly in letter form. So it's a collection of letters from the detective Alan Hope that he sends back to his wife and then the story is also told up of letters from some of the suspects and also from newspaper clippings and things like that. 
So I love epistolary novels and it was really fun to read one that was also a detective story. So I really enjoyed this for that reason. It was also quite a seasonal read because it starts at the end of September and then goes through to about mid-October and all of the letters are dated so you can kind of follow day by day a bit which is fun as well. But this one is a great book too if you're keen on music. I mean, I'm not musical at all and I still really enjoyed this, but I think you'd enjoy it even more if you know anything about music. Not that you have to, but you would enjoy it, I think, a lot if you are musical. It's all about the death of a conductor who is shot in the midst of a performance and many many people it turns out would have quite liked to have seen him dead would have liked to have seen him dead so the suspect pool is large the ending i didn't love i didn't really think it was quite a fair ending on the reader but overall i just enjoyed it it was light easy to read and i loved the letter format of this book so definitely one that i recommend and then another great seasonal read for autumn and even going into winter is Hair House by Sally Hinchcliffe. So this started out really well. It was a bit different from what I expected. For some reason, I thought it would be a historical novel and it isn't. It's actually set in the modern day. But I think the premise just made me think it would be one of those slightly gothic historic books because what happens is, again, a sort of young to middle-aged woman obviously with secrets in her past. She used to be a teacher, but for reasons that are unclear at the beginning of the book, she's been dismissed from her post as a teacher. And she decides to move from London to a fairly remote part of, of Scotland. And there she moves into a little cottage, which is on the grounds of a big estate called Hare House. And she has one neighbour in the cottage next to her who seems a very curious sort of woman and has a bit of a reputation of being the local witch. But the more you read this story, the more that you know that the narrator is not being fully honest with you at all. This is a brilliant example of an unreliable narrator. It's told in the first person and you're just never quite sure what is really going on. And some very strange things start to happen that involve her landlords, um, a brother and sister who live at the big house. And what she uncovers is also a strange history of their brother who died less than a year before she moves to Scotland. So there are some secrets within this family and there are also secrets within the protagonist's past as well. It's a good book to pick up in the autumn. It takes place mainly all through autumn and then into winter and there's a very atmospheric scene towards the end of the book where they're all snowed in and tensions kind of reach boiling point and it's the climax of the story. Um, so it's a really good sort of snowy wintry scene, there's a lot of tension, there's definitely a bit of that uh, sort of gothic trope uh, going on with this story as well. I thought it worked setting it in the modern day. That was a sort of interesting twist on this more typical type of story and a bit of an updated version of the kind of governess story um, because she does actually start teaching in a kind of governess role in this book, but obviously it's a more modern version of that story. So I found those things really intriguing and it kept me turning the pages. I was a bit disappointed by the ending though. I felt that things weren't tied up so successfully at the end. I do think this would be a really good book club pick if you're looking for a book club suggestion for the autumn or winter because I think that people would have very different opinions maybe as to what exactly is going on in this story, what the ending means, what they think um, 
some of the motivations of the different characters are, what's really going on. There's a lot that you can talk about and I think that it would be a really good book to discuss because I think people would have different ideas and it's the sort of story you want to talk about in a way too because when you finish it, you do a bit of a double take and go, what was really going on in this part and did that part actually add up and am I happy with that ending and what was really going on here? So it's the sort of book that's good to discuss. I, however, didn't feel that the ending was quite satisfying. I thought it was a bit too ambiguous. I did definitely read it in one particular way, but that still left me feeling like not everything was tied up, not everything was explained at all satisfactorily. So I think it would be a great one to discuss, but yeah, I'm not so sure about the ending. If any of you have read it, then I'd be curious to know what you think of the ending, whether it sort of satisfied you or not. But anyway, it was still a good autumn, winter atmospheric read. And there's also a beautiful paperback edition coming out of this. I think it's a Waterstone special edition. It's coming out the end of September. It's got like a black um, cover. And it's really attractive. So if you're intrigued by this, then I might recommend pre-ordering the paperback edition because it looks, well, I think it's prettier than the hardback actually. Um, and it might be worth putting on your to be read pile. So those were the kind of real seasonal books that I read. I did also read this lovely memoir, Nella Last War, which has been republished by Slightly Foxed, which is one of my favorite independent publishing companies. And the publisher sent me this book, which I was so thrilled about. I have the Nella Last memoirs already in a paperback series, but it was so nice to have a beautiful hardback edition of her, of her memoir during World War II. So I was so thrilled to get this. I love the hot pink end papers and the hot pink ribbon as well with this one. I think that's really beautiful. And I wanted to reread this and it starts off in September. So although it isn't a particularly seasonal book and that it goes through many years, obviously all of the war years in fact, um, it was still quite a nice book to start in September. And I really enjoyed it. This was a reread for me, but I so recommend reading these diaries if you've never read them before. They provide just a fascinating slice of social history in terms of what it was like just for a very normal, regular housewife um, living through World War II. Nella Last was a woman of 49. It's, it's called the Second World War Diaries of Housewife 49. And that's how she's described. She was 49 years old and she was a housewife. That was her occupation. And she had two sons and she was part of the mass observation project during the war where um, some ordinary citizens were asked to write their experiences. Um, generally, so the feeling of kind of morale during the war years um, could be sort of tested and understood. Um, that was a lot of the point of these mass observation writings. And Nella Last really took her job very seriously in that way. She wrote so much. Some of the diary entries um, were lost, like about all of 1944 was lost. And of course the rest has been edited. So this is an edited version of her diaries, but it's just fascinating. It's so interesting to read how ordinary people lived and got through the war. Um, she lived in a part of England that was very much affected by the Blitz. Um, she was out of London, but she was in Barrow, um, which was near a port and she was very much affected by the Blitz. She obviously had two sons she was very worried about during the war too, and a bit of a difficult marriage, which comes out in the diaries as well. But she herself was such an admirable person. I mean, you, she's the kind of person you wish you could have met in real life. She reminds me a lot of my mum actually, because this diary is full of entries about how she really has that make do and mend um, personality. And she's very proud of the recipes she manages to conjure up out of nothing, you know, the really strict rationing, but she still manages to um, 
make tasty meals and she really prides herself on being frugal and my mum is just like that she can sort of just look at an empty cupboard and still whip up some kind of amazing meal <laughs> so Nella last reminds me a lot of my mum so I always love returning to these diaries for that reason but if you're interested too in just what ordinary civilian life was like in Britain during the Second World War, then it's so interesting to read this and I highly recommend it. And then if you watched my London vlog, uh, you'll have seen that I bought Patience by John Coates at Persephone, or no, not at Persephone Books, at John Sando Books when I was in London. This is a Persephone book. And it was one that I'd read years and years ago and didn't remember having enjoyed all that much, but then Persephone fairly recently featured the book in their newsletter and it really made me want to read it again. And I actually really enjoyed it this time. I read it pretty much all on the train back from London to Yorkshire. It's a really quick, easy read. I found that it kept me turning the pages and it was just a really fun read, although very interesting. It's set, I think, in the sort of 1950s. It's funny because I'd remembered it as being set in the sort of Victorian age, uh, but actually it's, it was set in the 1950s and written about then as well. And it's about a young Catholic woman who is seemingly happily married. She certainly is a very happy mother. She adores her children and she tries to be a dutiful wife. But suddenly she falls in love with another man and begins a passionate affair with him and for the first time actually understands what passion and what pleasure from having sex is actually like, which she never experienced at all during her marriage. And although she falls so much in love, of course, these feelings that she has for another man conflict with her religion. She is a devout Catholic. And it was very interesting reading this book. I think when I first read it, I just had a lot of impatience for the main female character. And I didn't really sympathise that much with her. I thought she was, you know, a bit of a drip in some ways. And I just didn't enjoy it very much. But coming to it again, I did actually enjoy it so much more. And it's very interesting the way the story goes, how she does end up remaining a Catholic, but in a way that is more empowering for her um, as a woman too. And it's quite an interesting read in that way. I mean, it's definitely not a sort of feminist book, but it is interesting to see how she does become more empowered and even sexually more empowered throughout the course of the book, which is quite an unusual topic um, for the 1950s even to sort of go into this. And I definitely do recommend picking it up. It was, a, like I said, a really sort of light read, easy read, um, but still explored some interesting issues and what it was like being a woman in the 1950s and um, the expectations on married women and how those were changing, especially after World War II. So a very interesting read in that sense. And I'm really glad that I picked it up again because I think being that much, much older too you can come to a story like this with a bit more understanding and I was just very impatient <laughs> with the heroine the first time I read it um, and I had a lot more sort of sympathy being older and I think I was a bit more used to books from this time period as well that explore lots of similar issues if you've read Elizabeth von Arnhem for instance then you will definitely recognize um, some of the same sentiments coming up in this book too so yes I'm really glad that I read it again because I really enjoyed it this time and then sort of keeping with the Catholic theme a little bit, which was actually interesting, is I read The Fly on the Wheel by Catherine Cecil Thurston. Again, if you saw my London vlog, then you'll have seen me with Rebecca Russell, who's the founder of Mandalay Press, which published this book. 
we had a conversation about the fly on the wheel. This is actually being published by Manderley Press in October, but when I went and met Rebecca, she chatted to me about the book and she gave me a copy early, which was so kind of her. And I read it very quickly and really enjoyed it. This is set in Ireland in the early 1900s and at its heart it's really a tragic love story. If you love Russian literature like Chekhov, Tolstoy, then I think you'll really enjoy this and in fact there's a nod to Tolstoy um, in the book. One of the characters is reading one of his novels which I enjoyed noticing. But this is about a sort of small Irish society, very much of the middle class and upper middle class society in Waterford in Ireland. And a young woman, Isabella Costello, comes back to Waterford after having been away in Paris, in Paris finishing her schooling. She returns to Waterford and she's no longer the sort of gawky young girl that left, but she's a very beautiful and confident woman who's very aware of her own sexuality and she really wants to seize life by both hands. She doesn't uh, mesh too well with the middle class, very Catholic society of Waterford. And she begins a, an affair that can really only end unhappily. But it's such a good story. It makes you really want to read more. I loved the little details of society at that time. Things like um, all the details of the clothing that they wore, how they prepared for balls by like spreading chalk on the floor to make the floors a bit more slippery and um, the young women sort of set their tongs on the fire to heat up so they can curl their own hair. All these little domestic details that I found really fascinating and I, I just love details like that so I really enjoyed reading this. There's some beautiful descriptions of Ireland, uh, the Irish countryside as well. This is a real sort of spring summer read actually. Um, there are some great descriptions of hot stormy days um, which very much echo some of the emotions of the characters and the climax of the novel. So I really recommend this. I really want to read more by Catherine Cecil Thurston now. I'm very intrigued. She had a fascinating history herself, um, was very, very famous on sort of both sides of the Atlantic. Her books were really popular um, in the early 1900s, but she um, died tragically really quite young um, and in somewhat mysterious circumstances. So really interesting life. And I do, I do want to read more by her, but this was a great place to start and I really do recommend it a lot. And then um, I read this book whilst I was in London. It was another British Library crime classics Book. It's Death of Jezebel by Christiana Brand. I'd really enjoyed Green for Danger by her, which I read um, a few weeks or months ago now, I can't remember, but I'd loved that mystery. So I was really keen to read this new one that um, the British Library have republished. I didn't enjoy it as much as Green for Danger mainly because of the ending. I loved Green for Danger because I didn't guess the murderer in that, but Christiana Brand still played fair with the reader. You could guess all of the clues were there, but I found it a really tricky one to guess. With this one, I thought she didn't quite play fair um, and it just wasn't such a good mystery in that way, not such a good ending. And I really love a clever mystery. So I was a bit disappointed by that, but it still is clever. The plot is still interesting and it definitely still keeps you turning the pages and it's a good take on the sort of locked room mystery. This murder doesn't occur within a locked room but it does occur on stage um, as part of a pageant and the woman who is murdered is a sort of very unpopular mediocre actress and she is hung while she is in this tower that's part of the stage set. No one appears to be with her and 
this death happens in full view of an audience, no one is seen to approach her, so how on earth could she have been strangled to death? So it is quite a clever one, I was just a bit disappointed by the ending, but I still recommend it. And then my current read is Lucy Worsley's new biography of Agatha Christie. I've been so looking forward to reading this. I've just started it and I'm really enjoying it already. I really can't wait to just over the weekend carve out some time and just spend a solid couple of hours really digging deep into this and um, hopefully getting quite a bit of the way through. I just really want to sort of curl up with this and enjoy it and read a lot over the weekend because I think it will be so good. I love Lucy Worsley's writing. I think she's fantastic. I loved her Queen Victoria and Jane Austen biographies and I've been very excited about this one. This was kindly sent to me by the publisher as well and I really can't wait to Oh, just curl up, get cosy and read this. I think Agatha Christie is always so good for autumn. You know, just reading a good mystery is so good and reading about her life um, will be such an interesting read for me. So I'm very much looking forward to this. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed catching up on my recent reads with me. Let me know if any of these books appeal to you. Which one in particular would you be most keen to read? I'm really curious to hear your answer. And thank you so much as always for all of the lovely comments on my last video. To everyone who pressed the super thanks button on my last video too. I'm so grateful, but of course I'm grateful to everyone who um, watches my videos and supports my channel by your likes and your comments and your views as well. So thank you so much and I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have a wonderful weekend ahead. Goodbye!